Hi everyone, welcome along to this tutorial on how to submit a club friendly permit form using the new SWF online system. It's very straightforward. The first thing you need to do is open up a new browser on your computer, laptop, iPad, phone, whatever method of choice you want to use should be suitable um, to submit a club friendly permit form. All you need to do is go onto your preferred browser of choice and go to the scottwomensfootball.com website as you can see on screen. You should be greeted by this homepage. Uh, depending on um, what browser and on what device you're using, it may look slightly different, but this is what you should see on the home screen. At this point, there's a couple of ways on how you get to the, the actual club friendly section. There is a button right at the top of the website, or there is a, a box here which you can click. Either one will take you to the club friendly permit form. Here, as you can see, the URL, if you want to go directly and save it for ease of use in the future, is scottwomensfootball.com forward slash club dash friendlies. So once you're on this screen, um, the next step is to actually request um, or submit your friendly form. So all you do is click on this left hand box here, request friendly. And that will load up. The first thing you should do is download the guidelines PDF. Um, if you use the old system, which was the, the Word or the PDF document provided previously, um, that system included a lot of information on the actual form itself. Basically, these download guidelines PDF, they include the additional information that's no longer listed on this actual page itself. So it's very important that you click on this, download it, and then when you see this, read through all the information included within. So once you've downloaded the guidelines and read through them, you can start to actually submit your friendly request form. And all the information as was on the old form is pretty much the same. There's just a few changes here and there that you need to be aware of. So the first things first is your club name, and this is the overall club that you fall under. So um, in this example, um, we're just gonna use a made up name, which is gonna be Rob's Rovers. Then, the home team name. Now, for a, a friendly request form, it's only ever the home team that it needs to apply. So this should be your own home team. And the reason why we have a differentiation between the club name and the home team name is that sometimes there will be a difference. So, for example, uh, this team is going to be known as Rob Rovers Reds. And that just means that we know there's a differentiation with this team in particular. Uh, they're not the blues, they're not the whites, they're not whatever uh, different team name. They are this team that's applying for the friendly. Then in your team age group, you should just put down what age group the, the, the team play under. In this example, we're gonna put under 15. You should also put in the, the league in which you play in. So for example, I'm just gonna put SWF West. That isn't necessarily a league itself, but it's just an example. And the reason you should put this in is that this helps for your, your referees to, to point games as well as it helps us to just identify 100% that this is the team you're referring to. You should also pop in your club ID number. And as an example, we'll just put in this one here. You should then put in your contact email address. And there is two boxes for this. Uh, and this is just to ensure that we do get the right email address and that the information goes to, to you directly. So uh, in this example, I'm going to put in my email address, which has actually been saved. And it will put it across the two boxes here as well. You should then put in your club COVID coordinator. Um, and you need to include their name, email, and telephone number. So on this example, because it is a test club, I'm just going to put test here, but you should include all the relevant information. You should also put down the team COVID officer, and that's the person who, as I say, is the COVID officer for the team who will attend this match um, as part of this uh, official role. So again, we're going to put down test. We now move on to this section here, uh, and this is really important at the moment and will be probably for, for going forward um, in the, the short to medium term. You need to put down your home local authority. So I've obviously put West, so I'm going to use City of Glasgow as an example here. This box here is if the team is based out with Scotland. Um, that might not be relevant at the moment, but as we progress and hopefully things do open back up, uh, it may well be that you play opponents from out with Scotland. Um, and it could potentially be England, uh, Ireland, or even further abroad. So it's important you note that down here if that's applicable. In this example, I'm going to say that the opponents are from the city of Glasgow as well. Um, that would obviously mean that it is 
uh, typically a local match between the two, but it also means they fall within the, the health board areas. But make sure that you put down that your opponent's local authority is based on where the team itself um, and club is based. Um, so it's important. It's not just a case of obviously they might have players from different areas. You put down where the, the team slash club is based. Then for this section, you need to fill in your opponent's details as well as the match details. So the opponent team name, as shown on the Scottish FA Live system, and very similar to what we did up here, where it's Rob's Rovers Reds, you need to be able to put in uh, the actual team name. So in this example, I'm just going to put down Glasgow West Blues. And again, um, say this, this example of a club Glasgow West, uh, if I just put Glasgow West and they have uh, multiple teams at the, the under 15 age group, we're not going to be able to tell which one it is that we're referring to. So it's important we put down the specific team name so we can identify them here at SWS. The match venue, I'm just going to put down test for this, but again, you would note down where the match is taking place. You note down the opponent age group, which typically will be the, the same age group, but obviously if it's not, say it's a, a younger team, say it's an older team, you can obviously make us aware in this box as well. The match date. So at this point, you'll be prompted to select the date and a, a box will appear. Again, you shouldn't type this out. You should use the calendar function to select when the match will be played. So typically at the moment, we are processing friendlies on a week to week basis. Um, that's due to the changing situations um, around the COVID uh, restrictions. Um, so, for example, I'm going to put down Sunday, the 1st of November. I then pop in the kickoff time. You can do this in any format that works, but we'll use um, 24 hour. And we're going to say the kickoff time is one o'clock. You've then got these two boxes here, the away team distance traveled. And again, that should be from effectively the, the team slash club hub uh, to the actual match venue itself. So um, you should use something like an, an AE route finder or Google Maps to get this. Uh, we're not expecting it to be exactly precise uh, but it should be the rough mileage that the away team is going to travel one way to arrive at the match venue so in this example because it's local i'm going to put down five miles then the away team mode of transport again as part of everything that's going on currently you should be working with the, the, the away team to make sure that they are traveling in an appropriate manner uh, at the moment, um, based on the, the current government guidelines, you know, car sharing is not encouraged um, unless it's in a, an essential journey. Um, and again, public transport, if necessary, can be taken, you know, using face coverings, etc. What we're finding is that probably the, the best method uh, for most people at the moment is trying to to travel in their own cars. So um, while we put down here, if you're talking to the way team and that's the method they're using, you would just put down own cars or car is acceptable, but own cars just clarifies exactly that they're not traveling with five cars for 20 people. You've then got the COVID checklist um, and this, as you'll see, automatically is marked out as no throughout. And you should obviously make sure that you read through this and tick the boxes as appropriate. Um, what you'll see the first two parts is, is your team currently undertaking a COVID-19 testing regime? Um, the answer to this for everybody at the moment should be no. Um, a testing regime is similar to what they are doing in the, the men's professional game, i.e. You know, regular testing on, on almost a daily basis. Um, no club is undertaking the cost that that involves and the actual um, logistics that that involves. So at the moment, everybody will be marking down no for this. Um, and as I say, in the unlikely situation that you are going through a fully fledged testing regime and you mark yes, your opponents have to be able to go through the same testing regime as well. If they're not, the friendly will not be permitted. You've then got these boxes, uh, and as I say, you should make sure you go through all of them and read them and make sure that you are adhering to them. If you aren't, it's important that you mark down that you are not doing this so that we as an organisation are aware of that and can work with you to actually ensure that that is happening. Um, if you are conducting all of these things and, and adhering to them, then the friendly will be permitted. Uh, and again, you can mark these boxes as you go through having read them. So in this situation, I've obviously gone through and I've read them. I agree to them and I understand them all. So I am going to mark yes to all of the boxes. Once I've done everything, I would recommend going back through and just checking all the information is correct. Once you submit this form, you aren't able to edit it. So if you have made a mistake um, that cannot be edited, you will need to submit the form again. So it's worthwhile, as I say, just going over and making sure that everything is correct. If I'm happy that all the details are, and then go on and click on submit. 
This will then take a few seconds to process, and this will send uh, your request to SWF. So as you'll see, you get the following information. So first of all, foremost, you will get your request ID. You can note this down, um, and we certainly wouldn't um, discourage people from doing that, but it's not a, a necessity that you do this. There's a couple of ways you can go about actually getting the form back again, as you'll see listed on the screen in front of you. The first one is through the actual URL that's included here. So by clicking on this, what you'll see is that I'm taken to the form that I've submitted. And as you'll see, everything is what I submitted just shortly ago. And it's all correct as I intended it. So aside from the URL itself, you'll also get an email sent to you, which includes all the information that you submitted to SWF. And I'll show you an example of the email that you'll receive here. So we'll, we'll receive this into our inbox, hopefully within um, no later than 10 minutes afterwards. But if you don't receive it immediately, don't panic. First of all, it may fall into your inbox straight away, um, which is hopefully what will happen, but it may also go into your spam or your junk folder. So do make sure to check this as well after around about 10 minutes. As you'll see, uh, we get this following information. So we now get to see that the friendly request has been submitted, your request ID, which you can obviously use this to, to note going forward. And you do also get the URL of the form again. So. Uh, you'll have this in your inbox so that you don't necessarily need to save it um, once you've submitted the form from the SWF website itself. You can use this email to go backwards and then click on that URL as well. Now, say, for example, you don't receive the email from SWF and you forget to take down the request ID itself. Don't panic in this situation. Um, there is a way to get around this. Uh, we have implemented a recover request ID. So all you have to do is remember the email address that you used to submit the request, which hopefully um, you will remember because it's your email address you're using. Uh, all you have to do is pop that in, as I see it's automatically saved in this occasion, and then click on retrieve. What it'll do is then search for all of the ones that I have submitted. And as you can see, I can find it here. If you do submit lots and lots uh, using the same email address, you may have to, to try and look back and figure out which one that you're looking for specifically based on the time and date that you submitted it. But once you do, you can then see the ID, which you can now note down, and you can also click on View, which will load up the form. And again, you can copy and save this URL uh, for going forward. So once you've submitted your friendly request form, that will come to SWF and it's then our job to go through and then do anything that we require to, to approve the friendly. So there's basically three states that you'll find that your friendly um, sits in. The, the first one, and hopefully the one that will happen to most of you just um, basically on the first time of submitting the form, is that the friendly will be approved. Um, we're going to show you an example of this now, so using the form that I submitted, I'm going to use the ID, which on this occasion I've remembered, noted down, and I will click on Retrieve. And what you'll see load up is that here I can see that the friendly has been approved, which is great, and it's marked down in green. What I then can click on is View Official Response, and I can see all the information that's been provided to me on the basis of the friendly being accepted. And at the moment, this will just be a bit more information about following the match day protocols and any other important information that I should be aware of going into this friendly match. Now that the friendly is approved, depending on the actual age group of the match, if it's a senior game and the senior team are at home, SWF will put um, the contact email address into an email with the referees department at the Scottish FA to have a match official assigned. However, if it's a youth match, it's on the responsibility of the home team to basically contact their regional referee coordinator to have a match official assigned to the match. To do this, all you simply need to do is copy this URL and then send that to your regional referee coordinator. They can then use this very same URL to go on, view the friendly permit form and all the information um, that they need to obviously appoint the match official and to also see that the friendly has been approved by SWF as well. The middle stage, if you like, is under review. And what I'm going to do to show you this is I'm going to use the URL that I have copied and pasted. So on this occasion, as I say, I've got the form ID. I'm going to go here. Instead of it being approved this time, I'll see that it's in basically an amber colour and it says under review. 
Now, in this occasion, there won't be an, a, an official response because it is under review. But what you may spot is that there could well be a comment, um, and this will be left by SWF. If there isn't a comment, that likely means that the friendly is still under review. Um, and SWF, we will try and get round to processing friendlies within 40 hours. Um, don't worry if it's a wee bit longer than that. During busy periods, it can take a bit longer, but you will receive your friendly request response um, as soon as we possibly can. In this instance, there has been a comment left by SWF, which by clicking on here, I can see the information that um, is required by SWF to get this match approved. What you can see from what's been noted is that there isn't a COVID officer assigned on the SFA live admin system. So even though I may be aware that the, the team COVID officer who has done the online training and, and done everything required, I know that they've done that. If it's not listed on the SFA live admin system, it means that SWF can't go ahead and process and approve this friendly form. So that's something that I need to sort on my end with my team. I need to contact the club secretary and get that resolved to then go back and add a comment to SWF to make them aware that this has been done, the changes have been made and the friendly match can hopefully now be approved. If it's an issue with something with the away team, you as the home team may need to get in touch with the away team, make them aware of the issues. And once it's been resolved, again, add a comment here to let us know that that has been resolved. So to add a comment, it is as simple as just as you've seen, click on the add comment box, add your name and then add your comment. And this is the way to basically communicate to SWF regarding this, uh, this friendly so that we can go backwards and forwards and see all the information. So it means that if one person from SWF is working through the friendlies, they can see all the information that maybe somebody else who was working on it previously has also left with regards to this match. So it's important you use the comments box here rather than going via an email to the SWF inbox. You should always you try and use this system in the first instance, unless you're having any problems, which hopefully you shouldn't. So the final kind of status, if you like, for a friendly will be if the form is rejected. And in the unfortunate case that that is uh, what happens, um, what I'll do is I'll show you kind of the reasons for why that might be. Uh, in this instance, I'm going to use my email address to re re recover the request ID in this instance. So I'm going to submit, as you saw me do earlier, and then click on view. What I can see is that the form, unfortunately, has been rejected. And in this instance, um, once a form is rejected, it can't be switched back to accepted or awaiting response. It has been rejected and you will need to submit a new form based on the information that's in the view official response. So in this instance, what I can see is that unfortunately, it seems you've marked no for the relevant COVID sections of the form. And in order for a friendly to be uh, successful and to be approved, it needs to have all the COVID sections marked as yes. Now, this could well be because, you know, in this example, I've done it correctly, but let's say one of these is marked no, it could well be a mistake, it could be an accident or clicking on the wrong button by, uh, you know, by an unfortunate situation. Um, however, that does mean that the form needs to be submitted again. Um, as you can imagine, obviously, making sure that the COVID checklist is completed correctly is very important. Um, it's vital at this moment in time to obviously allow football to, to return um, and to get back to hopefully normality sooner rather than later. Everybody needs to be complying with the COVID um, guidelines within the Scottish FA Return to Football Hub. So um, if you have marked these no as a mistake, unfortunately, you will need to submit the form again. If there's something else that's caused the form to be rejected, it could well be, for example, that you're trying to play a team out with your uh, current health board area as based on the current gov gu government guidelines uh, by the Scottish government. That could be one of the reasons. It could be something else as well. However, the form won't necessarily be rejected if, for example, that you've put down um, just slightly wrong details. For example, perhaps you've put down uh, the wrong kickoff time, maybe even the wrong match venue. These are things that can be noted in the comments that will allow SWF to still accept the form. However, if there's something, as I say, under the COVID checklist or you've put the incorrect local um, authority area, it may well mean that the form is rejected. And in that instance, you will need to submit a new form. No matter what response you get from SWF, you will receive an email into your inbox to let you know there has been uh, an update to your um, request. Um, so what you'll see in your inbox is either the form has been approved, it has been rejected, or there's been a new comment left on the actual form itself. Um, either way, you will receive communication via email, or as been shown in this tutorial, you can use the request ID, type in the request ID, put in your contact email address, 
or use the URL to see the current status of your friendly. And from there, you can see if it's been approved, in which case you can then send it to your regional referee coordinator or your opponents, the URL. If it's been rejected, if you still want to try and apply again, you'll need to submit a new form. Or if it's under review, you may need to wait for SWF to, to come back to you to approve or reject it, or potentially you need to take action to make sure that the friendly can be approved. Hopefully this gives you a good overview of the new online um, club friendly request form. If you do have any questions or issues, you can still contact SWF in the normal ways. The inbox is SWF at scottish-football.com or the number at the moment is 0141 620 4580.